Welcome to part 2 of the uh, introduction to the e-course. If you haven't seen the previous video, please click just here for the previous video. In this video I'll be focusing on the more advanced functions of the e-course. Please note I am not showing all the functions of the e-course, as I don't even know them all yet. But please watch and enjoy. The next button I'll show you is the help button. It just bring up a welcome screen which you can have come on when you load up the system or just use it when you need it. And it's basically tell you to go to the ESU forum if you have any problems. The next screen is the configuration screen for the eCourse. So it's been broken down into three sections. You've got booster settings which is for the internal booster and you can tell it to if you have additional boosters you can tell it to ignore shorts on the other booster segments so you can keep on running on one uh, controller while other sections have had a derailment you then have a language, backlight and a screen flicker and you can uh, restart your controller or adjust settings or save settings I actually mean the next button on down is link as for ECOS have the ability to add extra functions which I have including uh, the ECOS detectors and a local net, uh, a LNET adapter which I'll show in another episode. Next one down is about how you drive your train. So you can set, you might not want anyone to take over your locos with an additional throttle, or you might have it. Show the number of functions, then you have a few other things. Next one is your points and accessories, so this is where you can adjust them. Next one there is for track signal, and what you actually have additional. So like I said, this have additional um, protocols, which are Motorola and Selectric. These are mainly used in the European market, but most things are with, coming along to basic DCC. You also have Railcom, which I'll explain in another episode. And you have a few more settings to do that. Next one is where about you set your e for networking. As you can control this via your PC, smartphone, and they even have a new controller which is connected over the home network. Next one is used for shunting trains, which I'll show you in another episode. And for last setup screen, give me information of the device, so it's hardware version 2, software version 4.12 which you can actually update via your, via your PC. You then have your serial number, internal uh, booster cutout so that it doesn't cut out unless you want it to. You then can uh, change what uh, internet protocol it's using on your home network. And you can also see your log because it generates um, all, um, all error messages on the device. And then you have more settings for, for a PC interface. And for the last button, I'll just click it. And this is for internal boosters, so I can see how much power being drawn. And external booster, which I don't have. And then uh, another screen for sending feedback to the thing, activating reads and trigger by feedback. As well as all the features I have already said, there's a few other neat features I I didn't explain that well in the previous video. You can now see I have a long list of locos on the left hand side. To change from long list to short list, I just press this button here, the multi button, and then it changed to single. Then if you want to have a particular train on that throttle, from your list, so if you're just shunting with shuffle trains and then you have one you wanted to control, just click on that and press the cross button 
and it have swapped over. I hope you enjoyed this episode or at least found it useful. Make sure to like, subscribe and share my page. Thank you for your time, Richard.